टोमेटोज रिमर दैट सीन इन द मूवी जिंदगी न मिलेगी दोबारा वेर अ बंच ऑफ रिच मिलेनियल्स वेर इन द टोमाटीना फेस्टिवल Can you imagine this scene being filmed today, where tomatoes are going for one fifty or one seventy rupees a kilo? Farhan Akhtar getting a head massage of tomatoes. Tomatoes getting smashed across Katrina Kaif's face. Um, there would be a public interest litigation. By the way, uh, kids among you, please don't get traumatized. This was a weird point in Indian television history where Katrina Kaif uh, kept getting mangoes for some reason seductively pressed against her face. um and well technically a tomato is a fruit so we are still on brand so tomato prices are escalating um due to a bunch of reasons unseasonal rains shortages in markets pests hot weather and also a less appreciated point that typically june to august is a period when vegetable prices seasonally pick up quite a lot although this time it's been much higher so look there's already a bunch of news articles and videos on why vegetable prices are picking up In this video we ask so what so what if tomato prices have gone from 35 rupees a kilo to over 150 or even 200 rupees a kilo in some parts of the country within a month what does this really mean for the economy well three things that matter first and obviously inflation now inflation has been coming down for india it was 6.7% in fy23 Six and a half percent as of Jan, four point three percent as of May. The RBI expects it to be a little over five percent in FY twenty four. Now, vegetables are about six percent of the overall consumer price index basket, which broadly means that the average Indian, according to our statistical organisation, spends roughly six percent of their budget on vegetables. By the way, overall we spend around forty-six percent on food and beverages, a little over nine percent on fuel, including petrol and diesel, um, and the remaining around forty-five percent on other goods and services. Now, just imagine if in one month this vegetable component of six percent has its prices rise by around twenty or thirty percent, overall inflation will naturally shoot up because of this. In fact the June reading already saw inflation rise up to 4.8% from 4.3% in May driven primarily by vegetable prices but also followed by other food items like protein uh, items cereals sugar etc so now the big question is if July and August uh, sees inflation shoot up Will the annual inflation in FY24 still be around 5% as the RBI has been predicting? And the bigger question is what will the RBI do in response to this? Now look, the RBI has a target of 4% inflation. It can tolerate it up to 6%. It has kept interest rates elevated at 6.5% for most of 2023, but has also said that hey, if inflation rises from here, I am ready to raise rates further. So now that it is rising further will it hike rates more two reasons why it might still hold off first just as vegetable prices are going up sharply they also eventually will fall sharply because vegetables have a smaller life cycle so as more supply hits the market some of this steep escalation is likely to reverse second core inflation is moderating uh, what's core inflation well you know take out food and fuel from the overall basket and that's core why is core inflation important see um if there's bad rainfall or tomorrow let's say oil prices globally doubled it's not really in a central bank's hands but what a central bank is worried about is if because of this let's say bus and auto fares start going up that in turn makes other things in the economy costlier it's worried that if there's so much demand in the economy that say cinema tickets or cars become more expensive because of this demand it's worried that if you start expecting higher inflation tomorrow you'll start rushing to buy things today and in turn lead to higher inflation today which is why the rbi then goes hey do i need to rein in some of this demand to prevent inflation from becoming too broad based should i raise interest rates a bit more So how does it measure the underlying inflation in the economy? Well, there are many metrics, but 
poor inflation is an easy proxy. So you take out food and fuel that the RBI can't control. And so how's the rest, uh, which is say things like clothing, uh, household goods and services, house rent, transportation, um, salon services. Uh, how are this bunch of doing with respect to inflation? The answer is that core inflation is actually coming down. Core inflation was at 6% levels through FY22 and FY23, currently tracking around 5%. Manufacturing costs have nosedived, the post-pandemic pent-up demand in services is mostly over, and probably at some level, consumer demand may not be as strong as it is made out to be. So the RBI can argue that, hey, I know my overall inflation is higher than my target of 4%, but it's driven by factors like vegetable prices, which are not in my control. And the fact that my underlying inflation, the core inflation is moderating means that I may not need to increase interest rates further. Third, we've talked about inflation, we've talked about RBI, let's talk politics. Remember, governments are extremely scared of food prices. In fact, um, look at some of the biggest revolutions in the world, from the French Revolution to the Arab Spring recently. Most of them started with people complaining about inflation, particularly of food. In fact, um, there were those uh, infamous words attributed to uh, Mary Antoinette, uh, if they can't have bread, let them eat cake. The unrest in the Middle East too started off with people protesting about prices of bread. I actually don't know why dietitians keep banning bread. People get very emotional about that stuff. In India too, governments have had problems when vegetable prices have spiked higher. So it's not surprising that central and state governments have swung into action, intervening in markets, saying that they'll be selling tomatoes at lower prices. In fact, it's not just tomatoes. The government is doing a bunch of interventions to control prices of other food items. In fact, um, there's even speculation recently that they may be thinking of banning exports of non-Basmati rice, which, by the way, would be 80% of India's rice exports and overall India accounts for 40% of global trade of rice. So if this goes through, this would actually put higher pressure on rice prices all over the world. Remember, there are state elections that are coming up in November and December. We have general elections in 2024. So neither state nor central government uh, wants to be seen sleeping on the wheel. So yes, tomatoes can be squished very easily, but they can also squish a lot of things very easily. For more such insights, like, share and subscribe to The Bond Economist.